Okay, you've had a good laugh, or you're pissed off at, at big time at me, but think about it. Moses, the illegitimate bastard son of his rape mother by his father and grandfather, never recognized by the king, by the pharaoh, and he knows that the, king, the pharaoh has many children through rape, and he's also getting old. The pharaoh's probably... 50 years old at least because Moses is 30 years old when he starts talking to him and when he comes back in, into the into the, um, Egypt always oh, 30 years old isn't it? Anyway, but that, that's the point where a man is a man by the time of 30 either you've made it to a man or you're not going to be one it, because maybe you're a woman but anyway um, the penis was an important part of this religion it's the uh, it's the sim over symbolized but penis worship isn't a new invention and they definitely did not like women that was seen in Genesis chapter 3 women were the scum of the earth and they were the number one sinner and this is how the whole thing started so here's Moses he goes to his step you know his his father his, and grandfather and they've got a love-hate relationship, mostly a hate relationship, because there can be no... He denies him. He says, no, I don't know you. And I think that's even written down somewhere. Yeah, we'll get to that whole shit that's going to be long, but we'll have to get pick up the pace. Um, so his plan is to go to his dad and jerk off in front of him to show him that he is the man with the sperm, that he is going to kill all of the firstborn children in Egypt because a lot of them are sons of the feral and he's showing him okay now I'm the man with the master penis and the power and it's a lot of its sexual over megalomaniac maniacism and he go wants to show his dad look at you're done and I'm gonna kill all the ones you fathered and I'm gonna father a bunch of my own and that is about the biggest fuck off as you can do to your raped uh, to your father or grandfather kind of thing you go in there and tell them all your descendants are gone and mine are gonna replace them and that was the thing of it this is getting a little tired isn't it uh, just so you're not uh, thinking this is all pulled out of a hat, we'll go quickly to verse 23 before we get to the next page. Uh, I will slay your firstborn. This is what Moses says, or wants to say to his father. He hasn't got there yet. This is what he's prepared to say. And he's going to tell his father, I'm going to slay your firstborn. So that's all the children of Israel, and we'll see that that's what he does. And this is the lion concept. It's it's not new. It's not crazy. I mean, it is crazy. But it's what was done by, and is still done by lions, and perhaps also human beings, male sperm maniacs who think they're lions, they will kill the children that aren't theirs, and in this case, children of the king before him was his father, and I mean, it's all pretty obvious if you see it and if you don't I guess you won't so we'll get on to uh, verse 24 <laughs> okay Moses has made this plan and his dad understands that he's not gonna be happy with him never was I mean there was no love between them so verse 24 the Lord sought to kill him so the Lord in this case I mean they were all lords the Lord in this case was more than likely the father of, the, of Moses and of course he wanted the guy dead because he knew that he had intended to rise up against him and then that would mean war so the best way to stop a war would be to kill its leader but it doesn't work possibly because Moses has a huge army with him but in the story it's written verse 25 so Zipporah took a flint stone and cut off her son's foreskin. Okay, imagine this. You're in the desert somewhere, and Egypt, and uh, there's some kind of a c 
confusion and fighting. There's probably some dead people. And the wife of your bastard son grabs one of your grandchildren, pulls out Oda's dick, foreskin, and hacks off the end of his foreskin. <laughs> okay. And then with the blood, with the blood, she touches the penis of her husband and says, you are my blood bridegroom. And this is, this is traditional. This is something you do. And then we start to wonder, okay, is there any sanity at all? And then we have to get back to thinking, no, there wasn't. There was no such thing as culture back then. There were, they didn't have culture. They had dictatorship and they had slavery. Where is there room for any kind of philosophical pondering? They've got no concept of morality and that's why Moses is in there like a dirty shirt so to say and there are just suckers for it because they've got nothing and he's ready to give them any bullshit they want to have and that's exactly what he gets on to but um, we'll get right back to that. I know most people aren't going to think that Moses went to the people of Israel and stood before them all I mean first of all there's too many of them because it's just 600,000 soldiers, and that doesn't include everyone. But anyway, supposedly he's up there with his rod, showing how he can make it hard by pulling on the end of its tail. What that rod is, could be a snake, could be his penis. But if it was his penis, it would be... <laughs> I mean, think about that, jerking off in front of all those people, and then Aaron explaining to them, this is your god. <laughs> that's it's brutal it's like saying we're gonna fuck with you and if you don't like it we'll kill you and it was it was horrendous when you think about how brutal it was they weren't even trying to make the lie appealing they they just made it blunt just blunt obscenity and that is exactly what it was blunt obscenity made into religion so, what did we learn today? Moses was a jerk off, but a very powerful one. And perhaps we'll see a little bit clearer in the next chapters why we think this is possible that he was just a, a jerk off. And I don't mean this in a bad way, I mean this in, in a simple way. He was simple. Moses knew that he could do whatever he decided to do because he could. And because he was sexually charged like a maniac. And when we eventually get to Jesus, I think we'll see that he was sexually charged as well. But he delivered his persona in a slightly more healthy way. I think Moses was not very healthy. You would call him a mad raper. Where you would think as, of Jesus as the crazy lover. And there's a big difference. And we'll get to that, but first we're going to, going to get to ending this.